Okay, today we're going to go over the anatomy of a pig heart. The first thing we want to do is orient ourselves externally. So the top part of the pig heart, the pig heart would be in you like this. And the top part of the pig heart is going to be referred to as the base. This is where a lot of blood vessels tend to enter and exit. The bottom part of the pig heart, where it actually comes to a point, is going to be referred to as the apex. And you can see this blood vessel right here going down around the heart, giving off many branches. This is going to be the coronary artery. This is the main artery that's going to feed the heart. In fact, this is one of the first arteries that actually come off the aorta, which is the main blood vessel coming off the heart. Now, let's go ahead and open up the heart and take a look at the internal anatomy. Now, this heart has been bisected in two, and we can see various chambers here. Here's a chamber, this is a chamber here, and there's different ways to cut the heart. Uh, but on each half of the heart, we can see all of the chambers. Now, what we want to do, because it's easy to get lost here, is we want to take a look. We want to orient ourselves. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to look for something we're familiar with. And most people are familiar with the left ventricle because it's the biggest, thickest, most muscular chamber in the heart. And it's easy to find. And it's big and muscular because it's going to pump blood to the entire body. So just looking around here, I can see all this very, very thick muscle here. And that is the thickest chamber. So the chamber is the actual space here. And this is the wall of the heart right here. This is the walls of the chamber. So since this is so thick, I know that this is going to be my left ventricle. And then I just start from there and I work my way out. So I know a valve leading to the left ventricle is going to be the bicuspid valve. And sure enough, that's going to be the bicuspid valve right here. And we can see these string-like uh, structures coming off the valve. They're actually part of the valve. These are called chordae tendinae. And attached to, they are attached to uh, muscles here in the wall called papillary muscles. And these muscles actually contract and serve to pull that valve open. Now, if we go further up here, if this is the bicuspid valve, and we know the bicuspid valve separates the left ventricle from the left atrium. So this structure up here, this space here, is going to be the left atrium. Now, if I move over here, I see another muscular structure. Not quite as muscular as the left atrium, but very muscular. This is going to be another ventricle, and this is going to be called the right ventricle. Now again, the right ventricle is going to have a valve leading to it. Now this is the right ventricle, and if we superimpose the heart, if I close it back up, you can see that this is also the right ventricle. I simply cut right through the right ventricle. And the same thing goes for this left ventricle. This is also the left ventricle over here. So this is the right ventricle, this is the right ventricle, and again, we can see a valve in that right ventricle. So this material right here is going to be a valve. And again, it's got chordae tendinae, it's got papillary muscles. That's going to be a valve. And I know the valve leading to the right ventricle is going to be called the tricuspid valve. Now above this tricuspid valve, and it's hard to see here, but I can put my probe in it, above that is going to be another chamber, another space. And this is going to be called the right atrium. In fact, if I put my probe in here, this right atrium is actually continuous with this big, looks like an ear. And because it looks like an ear, they actually call it an oracle. So this is just an extension of the right atrium. It's called an oracle. Now, since we've gone over all four chambers, now we've got to talk about blood vessels. And let's just think about this simply. There are going to be four major blood vessels that we're going to have to talk about and name. And one is either going to enter or leave each chamber. And you just have to know what vessel enters and leaves each chamber. We're going to have two, essentially two named veins entering the atria and two named arteries exiting the ventricles. So let's go ahead and deal with the arteries first because they're the most obvious. Arteries because they 
take blood away from the heart, artery has an A in it, away has an A in it, they have, they're under a lot of pressure. And because of that, they need to be very thick and strong. And we can see that there are two blood vessels. Here's one, and here's another one. And if we look on the other side, again, this blood vessel is just a continuation of this one. And this blood vessel and this blood vessel are just halves of each other. They're mirror images of each other, essentially. These are going to be arteries. And I can tell that by looking at the wall of the artery. They're very thick. And also, arteries tend to be very round. Because they're so thick and strong, they tend to keep their shape. So, typically an artery will be nice and thick, and it'll be nice and round. Now it's just a matter of naming these arteries. So again, I go to this artery, and this looks like the largest artery in the body. But again, I'm not positive, so let's see where that artery actually takes blood away from. So I go down, and again, this is the left ventricle right here. And I can see the left ventricle is leading right to this blood vessel. And what blood vessel comes off the left ventricle but the aorta, the largest blood vessel in the body. And I can see this tissue right here. This, this is another valve. And there's actually a valve here separating the left ventricle from the aorta. And this is going to be the aortic semilunar valve. That valve right there. You can see a little piece of it over here. There it is. Now the blood vessel beside it is also very large. So that's also an artery. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow this artery and see what chamber it goes to. I have my suspicions, but I want to confirm. So I'm going to take my probe, put it in here, and very gently, because I don't want to create a hole where there's not one, I'm going to push it around and see where this artery actually exits from. So I'm going to try to do this here. It's got a bit of a curve in it. There we go. And you can see the tip of my probe is actually inside the right ventricle. So this is going to be the pulmonary artery, which exits the right ventricle. Now I've got some more blood vessels that i got to deal with. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to close them up and close the heart up. And I'm going to look around for some very thin walled holes. And sometimes they're tough to find. And if I go over here, you can see here's some holes here. Possibly. There's another hole right there. You see. Maybe a little one down in through there. I'm going to open this up, and I'm going to see if I can actually make these a little bit bigger. I'm going to take my finger, kind of open this up a little bit. There I go. And I can see some large holes there. Now, the walls of these blood vessels tend to be very small, very thin. So that's an indication that they're probably veins. Also, look, when I let go, they sort of collapse. They're not very round. They tend to flatten out. Again, another indication that this is a vein. But let's just make sure. So I'm going to open this up a little bit, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my probe in this rather large hole right here. And I'm going to see where my probe comes out. So I'm putting my probe in there, and it comes out over here, the very top of this chamber here. And we identified that earlier. You can see the valve right here. The very top of this chamber is going to be the right atrium. So I know what vessel goes into the right atrium. This is going to be the vena cava. Now sometimes there's one hole, sometimes there's two holes, because you've had the vena cava, you have a superior and an inferior blood vessel. Sometimes they enter the atrium separately, sometimes they come together and enter it together. This looks like what's happening right here. So that's going to be our vena cava. Now let's go ahead and deal with this vessel over here. Again, a very big vessel, very thin walled. It's collapsing, so it's probably a vein. And I'm going to put my probe right through there. And this is where my probe actually enters. Very thick wall, so left ventricle. This is the left ventricle. Here's the valve, so this is the left atrium. What vessel enters the left atrium? That's going to be our pulmonary vein. That's going to be the pulmonary vein right there. Now above it, again, I have two more blood vessels. They look like veins, but I'm not positive. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my probe through that hole. And notice it comes out this rather large, thick-walled artery. 
So what this is, is a branch of the pulmonary artery. That's what I'm dealing with here and here are branches of the pulmonary artery. Now, one more thing I want to cover is you can see some small holes here and here, here and here. Most likely those holes are going to be branches of the coronary artery. And as a final structure in the heart, if we go back to the aorta, Remember, I talked earlier about the first blood vessel coming off the aorta. And that first blood vessel, if I look around here, I can see a small hole in here. And that small hole most likely leads to the coronary artery. And you can see my probe right there. It's moving a little bit, and it's very close to this coronary artery right here. So that's good evidence that this hole right here is going to lead to my coronary artery, which feeds the heart. And that's going to be it for the pig heart.